All right, guys, first of all, we have to unscrew, obviously, the power top of the power trims. It's four screws, two in the front, two in the back. 10 millimeters is fine, okay? In order to be able to work at the back, we have to take this pin out right here. It's pretty much easy to understand. This screw is already loose. I just need something to turn it with. Don't forget, this thing has, it was full of oil and it has a lot of pressure. But we released the valve here on the top left. Now we're ready to remove this. Maybe hit it with something plastic. It's coming out. You can put the screwdriver here, away from the. All right. Of course, we have to have something here to collect all the oil, right? So. Okay, since this is loose, let me lift this up. Okay, now we have this already out. Now this, we can break it up with our hands and stack it there. Now, next thing we're gonna do, Unscrew this screw over here with a Phillips screwdriver. I don't know why this screw is so rusted. It shouldn't be. So removing that, it will allow this plastic to come out. I know this because two weeks ago I opened this up to see what kind of uh, materials I will use. I mean, what kind of yeah parts I will use rather instead of buying the whole thing and I realized that I could get away with just changing <coughs> the parts I will show you the brushes and something else I don't know what it's called I'll show you right now what I mean so that's one screw coming out now the top part can separate from the bottom part it's a little hard because the magnet is keeping it together but once you have the wire here loose and everything and wiggle it hard it should come out it's coming out slowly we we'll have to feed the wires inside if it is so let's get this plastic out of here let's get this plastic out so it doesn't prevent the wires from going in and make our job more difficult so you see this now I can fit the wires and make sure the wires doesn't prevent this from coming out. <coughs> then we need to come out more. Uh, so we have the space to work with. So the blue one is already stuck in there because there was nothing pulling it. Now we're going to pull it out because we're going to need it for later okay <clears throat> so we can fit the wire in we bring the wire out you see this here we will take it out and show you how we get these grips that's a tool that you're going to need for this job to make your life easier pull it straight out Easy to come out. We're gonna check this one later. We're gonna clean it with a uh, capillary cleaner that will prevent any dust to be accumulated here. This is assuming it's okay. So let's change things that go wrong. What goes wrong in here is definitely these parts. I forgot what it's called. I will put you here in the link. So instead of changing the whole assemble, with the wire and everything and instead of changing the armature we're only going to change these two uh, 
things here all right see this one is getting stuck in here that's why last time it wasn't able to come out when i was pressing the button i got two times stuck the first time with my friend we just loosened the the, the the valve here and we came we manually lift up the engine second time I, I was alone it was very difficult to start the engine luckily what i ended up doing it was hitting this part like a starter pressing the button and with my help i was able to this one moving a little bit i was putting some some force here and i was able to lift it up so i don't want to keep on doing that that's why i'm going to change these parts now and hopefully it will work like brand new so i'll show you what i mean in a minute so right here i have what i need for this job i think everything is there i have a lot of more parts here for this stuff what do we have here is now this is the part that i want to change here and now this is what i needed brand new springs because as you saw the old one didn't have enough power to push this out two of them between this and this i will even take a picture to show you the how worn out they are and this part right here so i will take a picture to show you the old one with the new one to see the difference if the if this took six years to worn out and all the dust and the residue from the old one been accumulating inside here and around the armature which we have to clean all this residue here it's what's really you know getting everything to stuck and the spring and everything so let me clean this and i'll get back with you okay you see this a lot of dark spray came out now it looks much cleaner so i will let it dry from the carburetor cleaner that's why i use carburetor cleaner because it will dry and will have no nothing no residue there almost got dry a little more it will dry completely and i was i would change this seal with a new seal that i got that's why i left this here it's garbage anyway i should have shown you before i forgot that when i pressed the button it didn't even barge anything it was dead like last time it was dead and when i open it clean everything and i put it together but i did not have a spray last time and I put it back together after I play a little bit with the springs and after I unstuck the already worn out thingy, whatever you want to call that, whatever is the name I forgot. It was working fine for like a month and a half. It gave me plenty of time to order the parts. I kept the parts on my garage. I was ready. In case this happened again, I knew where the release valve war was. I knew what kind of screwdriver to get. I knew with two people I was able to lift up the engine. <coughs> the unfortunate thing was that it happened to me when I was by myself. Well, with my girlfriend rather, but she couldn't help lifting this up. Only was able to push the button. So, after everything that gets dried down, I will start putting things inside. But as a matter of fact, I gotta clean this out here too. I'm pretty sure a lot of residue will come out. Oh my God, the whole spray here, it's black. If you can see this, it's pitch black. That means a lot of, a lot of residue here from the old one. The residue, you know what that does. It prevents the magnet from making a proper contact. So that's another thing we can stop this from working right so a brake carburetor cleaner is the best it cleans everything very good it dries fast and it's supposed to be great for this job if it's good for your brakes it's good for this one if you use wd-40 a lot of, of water-based stuff, a lot of oil, a lot of stuff is going to be here. Oil is good, but not uh, 
not the water based stuff there is water there from what they say so this is the best to use should be clean now you see the armature it looks black and everything I will brush this out too and make sure everything is dry before I put it on oh my god look at this black thing coming out look all this black residue coming out oh my god Yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to be using carbulator cleaner on my hands, but I will rinse my hands pretty, pretty soon. With fresh water. Guys, I'm doing all this, and if it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, might as well. I will go buy the whole thing brand new and put it on here, and problem fixed. But. I'm assuming it will work like a charm, but again, next thing I will buy, if it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, a brand new armature for $150. I'm not going to buy the whole kit assembly together. And I will definitely have brand new uh, brushes, I don't know how you call it. I think this is pretty much done with the residue. The spray looks like it's coming out clean. <sighs> Let it dry and start putting things together. Okay, take a look at this. Within a couple of minutes, how dry this looks. It looks pretty dry. It dries out fast. So it should be fine. Okay, before I forget, I will put on the new gasket. It's always a good idea to lubricate the gasket so it doesn't get stuck and get glued. Before we forget, <coughs> there's no reason not to put this on already. It's better than the old one. Could have been fine, but for a couple of dollars, might as well put the right one here. So this is a brand new spring. It has a big pressure, much better than before. Oh yes, this is the new one. Go like this. Take the other brand new spring. Put it here. There's only one way really to put this on, because as you can see here, this is the groove that you need the wire of this to come out so there's no way to mess this up very pretty much easy to see which one is going where but it's always good to remember which way make sure this is level with that so it doesn't give any pressure oh yes the other one was getting stuck inside I had a hard time letting it come in and out now it's not getting stuck so you saw how this is going this is going here, I saw you earlier. So let me put the cable on. Remember I told you we need this to be a little long. Let's get as much cable as we can from here. And we can always push it back, that's not a problem. So, that's that. And this is that. We we'll put the screw here if it's helping us better. Of course you don't see it like I see it, but you really have to see exactly how. I mean, this is just putting a screw together with a the wire it's kind of in place let's make sure this is pushed back and then we're going to do the final okay this looks like it's fine there right there we go to tighten that make sure it's tight but don't make sure don't break it okay so let this wait right now it's not a problem this one is already tight right no it's not now it's tight perfect so now this is what i want to do last time i found it much much more easier what we got to do now is okay we can put this on here but anyway so now i gotta put this inside 
I feel the pressure. Before I wasn't feeling the pressure. Last time I put him back, the pressure wasn't even there. So that's why it's kind of difficult to put it in, but that's what you want to feel. You want to feel pressure. If you don't feel pressure, it's not going to work the way it's supposed to work. Now, this is where you probably need to have two hands, but you can improvise. Putting the armature inside, okay. Pushing it down as much as you can. Now, take a screwdriver. Or with your hand from here, try to get it back as much as you can. Improvising and this and that, it took a couple of seconds to hold them back and to be able to put this inside, right? Now, is it all the way in? It's all the way in. Now, the tricky part is this. You gotta put this here. All right. We need that here, why? Because the magnet is gonna pull this out from the base. So with that, we are not allowing the magnet to pull this out. So. You see what I'm telling you? The magnet is pushing it inside. Another thing is, we gotta make sure. There you go. If everything lines up, that means we are good. The wires are here. Let's take this one out. And before we do anything, let's make sure it sits in place. How are we gonna do that? Actually, let me put on the screws. Let me put on these two screws. Let me put on this. Make it tight. Make it tight. Let's press the button and see if it's going to turn before we put it on. Oh yes, down, up, before it wasn't even barging. So let me put everything on, wipe this out, make sure no residue end up in the reservoir. And that's how easy it is to change power trim that looks dead, doesn't move, doesn't work, and it looks like hundreds of dollars to fix it. I have to find me a screw like that. I gotta go inside and try to find something to change this up. And then I come back and I try to line up this with this, which is like that. That has to be horizontal, and we should be back in business. As long as this seal here is good, we have nothing to worry about. So, I want to look for some screws. That's the screw that we need to replace. Obviously, this is not stainless steel. I got some of this, but because this is not flat as this, and this is too short, I will end up going with this one and I'm going to cut it to this length and let's see if it works. I tried to get the right screw that it have any. I ordered one I think it was that. It wasn't the one I was hoping but it's always good to improvise. I mean after all it's just a screw. So this is the length we're supposed to have. Let me see now if this will work. The only thing we need is just to keep this in place. We're able to unscrew it in the future. And it looks like it worked like a charm. Now we have to put this back. Bring this lower as much as we can. It doesn't really matter actually. This is just wires. So let me see how easy now it is for this to line up. Looks like it's in place. The screws will bring it down. Again, that's another one screw here. 
we can use a Phillips for now. See, it's coming here. Oh. It's coming in handy to be able to move this around because you're able to put a screwdriver here. It makes so much faster. Put this screw here. This one is going up very easy. Now that I got everything pretty much tight or even, I will just go a little bit more tighter here. A little bit more tighter here. I like to do it like the tires, always opposite direction. You want to feel it snug, but you don't want to like overdo it. So now what I like to do, I like to add here, whatever we lost from here. As a matter of fact, let me put this back so you can see how easy this is. I'm pushing it up. Don't forget the pressure it's released from the all corner here. So we we'll level this out. We we'll take this lock pin here. You have to wiggle it. There you go. Now I have to put back this pin. All right, it's on. I'm not looking for it. Okay. So open this up. Using screwdriver is not a good idea. Or if you use a screwdriver, make sure it's big enough. So the way I like to, first things first, this is the relief valve, always good to know, turning it clockwise, it's when you want to have it engaged with your power, anti-clockwise, it's when you want to do it manually, if you don't turn the screw, you won't be able to move your engine, even if you have five people, you got to release this valve if you want to have manual control so I turn it to the right it's power to the right is power that means now you know it's engaged with the power steering if I turn it all the way on the left this is what I had to do to do it manually it says here manually to the left but make sure you know where the screw is because from the boat the water line is here you won't be able to see it if you prepared you know what it looks like you'll be able to re to to release this and you can even take your boat out slowly even though your engine is dragging on the floor as you see here but I have no other choice that's only because I had to have a very low trailer starting in the floor and there was no other way around it I had to release it let it drag slowly 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 but the engine is not locked so it is able to to flex and as you saw it happens two times it didn't break just scraps that's it so now let me show you how to add a little oil i have some stuff here the best thing i found guys is this you see this small bit very small tiny hole that's a pain in the butt but in order to be able to add oil and have the oil coming out and the air coming out while you add i bought this syringe from Amazon 12 ml <clears throat> it's for teeth purposes with a little curve here a little pointy I cut it here so I can have a little bit more and you're gonna see that this is barely barely making it into the hole allowing it for the air to come out so this is so you pull this up you pull it here then you go in all right you see one series without this how would you fill this up no way in hell so i tried doing it and i thought i was full meanwhile i was just pushing air out and air bubbles and i was never able to get the oil i needed it inside this is the best way a syringe doesn't have to be curved but if it's curved it's even better for me don't forget we lost a lot of uh, oil here you see the air coming out now learn the hard way guys i'm just letting you know <clears throat> how to make your lives easier 
And now, okay, it looks like we're there. We don't want to waste any more oil, right? So, we'll put the cup on. And let's go up and down with the engine. And then try it again. Is it going to work? We have to, there you go, give a little time <coughs> for the empty pipes to get. Okay, I can't go a lot all the way down because of the thing, you see? I have a very low trailer. Oh, guys. This is really, really strong. I mean, I remember the last couple of years, it was taking forever to go up and down. Oh my God, this is day and night. It's about $60, $70 worth of that, plus the swing and the little thing. Less than a hundred dollars, less than a hundred dollars, way less. And I was able to fix my power trim. This over here is about two hundred dollars. But you can always change this seal, this seal, or these little seals by yourself. I changed them last year. You saw, I saw a Yamaha guy replacing it. Same thing. It doesn't have to be a Honda. I mean, the same principle. You just unscrew it, replace the the, the seals put it back together nicely you just have to have the proper tool I got it for 80 bucks the proper tool that goes here that's it so now after a couple of seconds because of the pressure I'm gonna open this up air will come out and maybe a little oil if you do it run away you're gonna have air and oil bubbles coming out if you wait a couple of seconds like a minute or two it will be dry like that. So now let's try to see if we can fit more there. Obviously we can. Why? Because the system now is getting tight. There was room for more. We can keep on doing that for a couple of times so until we make sure that we're confident that we have enough oil. If we don't do it right now, we're going to have to refill it again a couple of more fishing trips. So the more you do now, the later the less frequent you're going to have to refill it here. Of course, if everything works right, if you don't have no leakage here, no leakage there, you won't have to change it. Oil doesn't, doesn't, doesn't evaporate, but with wear and tear, you'll be losing oil here and there, and you want to replace that. This is only 12 ml putting in every time. Don't think it's a lot. Okay, now it's starting to come. You know what? I think I'm there. I would just go up and down one more time, but that's it. I'm good for a couple of months. Let's go up. If it responds on the way, that means it's enough. Let's go down. Let's go up. It goes up like when it was brand new, guys. I'm serious. I haven't seen it being this strong for many years. Okay. I think it's, I think the job here is done. So tell me what you think. Tell me if this help you. I don't see no leakage here. I don't see no oil leak here. I don't see no oil leak here. No oil leak here. I haven't changed this. It looks a little tricky, but I don't see no oil in here. So if I do, it will be the same concept as this one. Unscrew it, change whatever you see, put it back. You go to Honda, you see the schematic, you see what you need to do. All right, guys, peace out.